Family, friends, and faith have kept wildfire survivors moving forward during this difficult year. Mahelani Richardson follows one man's journey, plus how a daring rescue turned strangers into best buddies. But first, church members mourn a historic loss, but say their ancestors saved a sacred site. Historic Wyola Church was near the center of the Hawaiian Kingdom in Lahaina and it's where Christianity started on the island of Maui. Over its 200 years, the church was destroyed during past disasters. There was no siren, nothing. And once again, during last year's Lahaina wildfire. Our Haleai, it started to burn. Everything was burning from the top down. Tama Kaleleiki, kahu or guardian of the royal tomb, took photos of the church's dining hall in flames around 6.30 that night. The smoke was so black that you could see, like we call akulele, uh, these fireballs, just, they're just going. He knew Wyola Church would be consumed. The grief of knowing the inevitable, but we didn't know that our whole town would be gone. Church caretakers hope to rebuild in two years, but say during the Lahaina fire, everything inside the church was destroyed, including the Koa pews and altar and historic documents. Sadly, because of our church records having been burned, we don't know where everybody is, and, and headstones were swept to a corner. Just steps away, more than a thousand people are laid to rest in the church's Waine'e graveyard, including members of the royal family. Among the most prominent, Queen Keopuolani, wife of Kamehameha I. Despite the vicious flames, the entire graveyard was miraculously spared. I was actually amazed how much is still intact. I think because of the people that are here, it's protected. My great-grandmother, Marianne Kaula Shaw Richardson, is buried here too. Despite lost records, some treasured photos survived. Here she is with Queen Liliuo Kalani. Her husband was a member of the Queen's Privy Council. Welcome home, you know. It's a great thing. Church members hope families come forward to help identify unmarked graves. And even though the church building is gone, it's their faith that endures. There was five bedrooms up on the top floor. On the north end of Front Street, Charles Nahale visits his family's property. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had just called to get permission to lay down gravel. Seems like it's taken a long time just to do this much, but slowly but surely, I guess the tortoise wins the race. Nahale says he's seeing progress. His immediate neighborhood with concrete foundations looks completely different. This is my, my house. From when Lahaina was unrecognizable a day after the disaster. <laughs> Memories of that tragic event remain vivid. You could feel the heat and you could smell the smoke. It just came out of nowhere. We were with Nahale six months after the catastrophe when his outlook was still bleak. There's not much that's happened since the fire or six months out. Since the fire, Nahale has lived like a nomad. I got into something a little more long term. I've moved five times. He hopes to move back home in a couple of years with his inner strength still intact. And I try to stay uh, with aloha and pono within because strength comes from love.